When you're out and about traveling, whether it's outside of your country or just outside your state or province, what do you look forward to the most? Is it the shopping? The attractions? Or is it the food? In this video, I'm going to cover a couple of tips and tricks to get you on your way in Japan, as well as visit a couple of restaurants. First up, the Suica or Pasmo card is a really convenient tool to getting around Japan. They're easily accessible and can be purchased at the airport or any of the major subway stations. You pay a 500 yen deposit for the card, which you can get back later when you return the card, as well as any remaining balance left on the card. Japan still relies on coins as a main part of their currency. Even common values like a dollar or five dollars or a hundred yen and five hundred yen are still coins. So you can kind of understand why it's such a hassle to carry on all these coins every single place you go. By loading money into the cards, you eliminate the need for cash at subways, buses, convenience stores, and even vending machines. Just trust me when I tell you that it's going to be a lot more convenient to just use the card instead of fumbling around with money and trying to figure out what stop you have to take when buying tickets from the ticketing machine at the subway station. Now when you're traveling to Japan, chances are you're probably going to be renting a Wi-Fi egg or a SIM card. Here's a quick tip. If you're traveling with multiple people, get the egg. If you're by yourself, get the SIM card. The egg allows you to share the internet with multiple people while having a SIM card enables you to not have to worry about charging both your phone and the egg at the same time. Unlike South Korea, Japan has a really, really great system for Google Maps. Everything from information, locations, points of interest, local attractions, business hours, GPS navigation, even reviews for places that you want to check out. It's all right there at your fingertips on your phone. You'll notice that there are a lot of purple place markers on my map. All of these locations are available for you guys to check out in the link in the description below. They include all of the locations listed in Zach and USC Gundam Store's Tokyo Shopping Guide, as well as a few points of interest, restaurants, and attractions that I wanted to check out myself. Using Google Maps to get from one place to another is really, really simple. Let me show you an example. A couple blocks north of Akihabara Station was my capsule hotel, The Glancet. By using GPS, you can set it from your current location or from one point to another. In this case, I was searching from my Akihabara capsule hotel location to the Nakano Broadway so I can get to the Mandarake there. You can easily find your subways, transfers, or even set the time of departure so that you can get there in a timely fashion. Best part is, you don't have to worry about missing your stop because every single stop and station name is listed right there in the Google Maps. And if you ever get turned around, you could always use your current location to find your way to wherever you're going. Now you may have heard about Japanese convenience stores being the bomb. This is an understatement. The food at Japanese convenience stores is top quality. A lot of people end up coming to convenience stores even just to have a good meal because you can have anything from pasta, fried rice, onigiri, sushi, fried chicken, sandwiches, even salads. Now I've been having some trouble with my iPhone and so excuse the lack of audio in my videos but Basically, if I was ever feeling peckish, I'd run to the convenience store and pick up something in their fried food section. So they had anything from hot dogs to fried chicken, karaage, or even some croquets. They're really good. You should definitely check out a convenience store and just try one of everything. Seriously. Now the major convenience stores are either 7-Eleven, Daily, Family Mart, Mini Stop, and Lawson. My favorite is probably Lawson because they have the best fried foods. But Daily is known for their really great pastries and breads. And 7-Eleven just for generally everything. In this Lawson they have pasta, sandwiches, hot dogs, beer, and plenty of teas and drinks to choose from. 
Here's my favorite part, the snack section, typically towards the front where the cashier is. They have all the fried chicken and different kinds of yakitori that you can get to go, as well as these delicious croquettes. I picked up a couple of things and took them upstairs to this really cool dining area that they had upstairs for people to kind of just sit down and relax. First up, we have our chicken umakara, which is really tender chicken thigh that's breaded and fried, all neatly packaged in this really cool, easy to rip packaging. So you don't get any oily fingers. This chicken was anything far from being dry. It was juicy, tender, and flavored just right. Not too salty, not too bland. Seriously, Japanese convenience stores really know how to do their chicken. I think my face says it all. Up next, we have some amazing momotare yakitori. Obviously, it's not going to be as good as if you were to go to a place that specifically does yakitori. But it's still pretty damn good. Just look at it. Seared on the outside with little bits of crisp on it. And juicy on the inside. Truly amazing food. Easily accessible at your local convenience store. Now all of this food can get you a little bit thirsty. So I had some Kirin rich green tea. Which is this really strong, deep rich green tea. Served super super cold. Truly a great drink for a hot day. Now Genkotsu Mensch can be best described as a giant meatball that's seasoned and breaded to perfection and then deep fried and served hot. And the best way to know whether or not it's good or bad is to take a bite and see all of the juices inside. Now all of these foods are basically under $3 each, so just give them all a shot, I highly recommend it. One place that I will never ever get sick of is Kokoichi. This place is amazing, it's the best curry rice you'll ever have. Uh, Zach introduced it to me um, a while back and I just couldn't get enough of it. So. Like the last time I was in Tokyo, I think I ate here maybe like four or five times, something like that. Um, <laughs> let's go inside and grab a bite. Now the menu here is not that difficult to understand because a lot of it is actually written in English. So you don't have to really worry about not knowing. And uh, basically what you would normally do is you pick one and then you can kind of pick the size so you can tell them like how many grams you want or if you just want a regular just as is price or whatever it is that's fine but uh, basically what I did was um, I ordered the thinly sliced pork curry usually I get some spinach on there but I kind of wanted something a little just simpler today so I got that and I got 500 grams of rice so you add like two dollars to that um, and then you can you also have to select like the uh, the spice level so I usually just get the base because it's usually spicy enough so um, but yeah Coco Ichi man it's, it's the bomb I could I could eat here every day at least once a day <laughs> Now every single dish of curry is made to order fresh. So every time you place an order, they make a brand new batch. And they'll put it in a separate pot, like a small pot, and they'll, and they'll cook it up just whatever order that you have, just the way you like it. Um, so there's a little bit of a personalized aspect to it as well. Um, but yeah, it's really good. <laughs> It's so good. It's got a little bit of spice to it, but not too much. It's got a very deep, rich um, pork brothy taste to it. It's so good. Seriously, you guys need to try this place. Um, I was really glad that they opened one up in Korea. Um, 
up in Seoul, but it's not the same. <laughs> See that thinly sliced pork? It's so thin that it's like, there's no chance for it to be dry. It just kind of absorbs all the curry inside. It's so good. Japan isn't well known for their portion sizes, so what you do is you get rice bowls. Now if you're traveling on a budget, there are actually three places that uh, that serves really good rice bowls. Um, it's called gudon, which is basically kind of like, it's like Japanese bulgogi basically. It's like a sweet marinated pork. And basically what they do is they'll just kind of throw it on top of a, a rice and you just kind of have it. And it can be as low as three, four dollars and it's pretty filling. But uh, yeah, um, I still have some time to kill before I can check into my capsule hotel. But right next to it, we have Sukiya. So yeah, so let's go, let's go check this place out. Typically, these donburi joints usually have a bar for single eaters as well as tables for people who are here with a party. Sukiya typically has beef or pork as part of their rice bowls, but they seem to have added eel as well. For about $9, I ordered this set which came with soup, rice, freshwater eel, as well as thinly sliced pork. You can tell that the eel looks really, really good. Most donburi comes with thinly sliced pork that is marinated in a sweet sauce. It matches really well with the rice and the caramelized onion. This is a definite budget dish you should try. Mm. This is just so good. The onion is caramelized. I should also note that eel at a sushi place is probably going to run you close to 1500 yen or about $15 for a portion that's much much smaller than this. I should also note that there are other places similar to Sukiya that offer rice bowls with different sorts of cuisine such as this place called Tendon which offers uh, either soba noodles or tempura with your rice. A lot of restaurants employ vending machines to take care of the orders and employ staff to prepare the food. You'll notice the IC pad on the right which also takes Pasmo and Suica so you don't have to be bumbling around with coins like I am here. This particular dish I had was especially delicious with a half cooked egg mixed in with the rice and it paired really well with the tempura. Other notable places include Yoshinoya as well as Matsuita. Now a lot of the places I was eating at were pretty budget but I decided to kind of splurge one day. It's currently 4.30 and I'm at a really good uh, tonkatsu place uh, that I visited uh, last year I was here too. Um, as usual, you have to wait in line, so that's the place right there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just hot. It's almost 5 p.m., so rush hour is gonna start. So I gotta get the last last of my shopping and stuff done um, as soon as I can. This place closes at 8, so I wanna kind of get in and get out as soon as I can. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll check out this place in a half hour after I finish. Finish, uh, waiting. A half hour before dinner service, I still had six or seven people in front of me and a whole lot more behind me. Being a single diner, I was seated in the first floor at the bar right in front of all the action where they cook the food. Now they have the pork medallion and pork loin. The medallion is like the really thick cuts of pork, and the loin is where it's a little bit thinner. So, I've already had the medallion before, so. I'm hoping to get the, the loin today, so I ordered a set menu, so I'll check it out. It's like really quiet here. Really, really quiet. Every single tonkats they make here is made fresh to order. 
and you can see here that he's rolling each and every single pork medallion by hand and breading it and then getting them ready for frying. My set menu came with a bowl of rice, miso soup, salad and some pickled vegetables. My donkats arrived fresh and super hot straight from the fryer. It was crispy on the outside and completely juicy on the inside. These delicious cuts were served with a bed of fresh salad and homemade donkats sauce. Despite being only lightly salted and just way it aged, I was surprised by how deep and flavorful each morsel was. Each and every bite brought out the deep taste of the pork. There was no reliance on sauces or any kind of condiments. But I should warn you that this particular set cost me $18. Now if you're in Japan, chances are you're probably here to try some ramen. I'm standing in front of Ichiran and basically um, this is a place kind of known for its focus on really letting you uh, enjoy your ramen and by that I mean you're not supposed to talk much so uh, I'm gonna kind of go in there and really quietly try to film the experience um, most likely this will be a voiceover like a lot of the other places I've been through uh, because this is it's just not a lot of places that really allow you to uh, um, go ahead and easily film and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, much of this will be voiceover, but let's go inside. Now, I'm not trying to give the impression that this is the best ramen in Tokyo, because it isn't. But what this place is, is a good experience and a really decent price for you to have a good meal. Now, upon arrival, I was met with yet another vending machine that required for me to use cash. At this point I was pretty hungry, so I ordered the regular ramen and the extra sliced pork. I'm in this small little cubicle and my shoulders practically touch both sides. And the seats are kind of bolted to the ground and the seat doesn't come out far enough for me to be able to sit comfortably so the chair is actually a stool and it's sitting comfortably in between my knees and my butt it's like i'm sitting i'm literally sitting on my thighs so yeah at least it's air conditioned it's so hot upon arrival you're seated at a bar and in front of you you can't see anybody just the hands of the worker in front of you the no face man hands you this order sheet in order for you to customize your ramen order I ordered mine with medium dashi, which means it's not as salty or strong. Now richness depicts how thick the soup is. Basically, the richer the soup, the fattier it tastes. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. So you just kind of choose your pick and enjoy. Again, they really want you to focus on your ramen. There's nothing quite like a hot steaming bowl of rich brothy ramen. My broth was just the right amount of spice and richness. It was perfect. And the thinly sliced pork added a really great extra layer of texture to my ramen. Despite having a bidet, I was surprised at how many rolls of toilet paper they had in this bathroom. Well that's about it for my quick guide on getting around Japan and eating on the cheap. What did you guys think of this video? Are you guys hungry? <laughs> Were there any places you wanted to check out yourself? Beat me down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Until next time, bye! Hold on, hold on, don't go yet, don't go yet. Please, stay. I promise it'll be worth your while, okay? Um, 
I, I, I really just wanted to say thank you to those of you guys who have always been um, supporting me throughout the past year, year and a half of the existence of my channel. And um, so, yeah, in order to congratulate you for actually making it this far into this video, I'm gonna do a giveaway. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw all the comments for this video into a random comment picker. However, those of you uh, who are watching this right now will be eligible because I'm gonna actually request that you guys type your comments in a specific format. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to type. Uh, whatever comment that you want, okay, um, you can say, to throw people off, you could, I don't know, name your favorite color, color Skittle or m and I don't care. <laughs> it could be whatever, okay? Um, but I, in order for you to be eligible, um, I want you to kind of hit enter like five or six times and then at the very bottom, I want you to type, uh, let's say your favorite number. Okay. Just type your favorite number at the at the at the bottom of a comment. Um, that way, when I when I choose a comment for uh, this giveaway, um, I'm just gonna choose one person. Um, as long as I see that number at the bottom, then I'll kind of be like, okay, well, you watch the end of the video, so you're eligible. And that's that. So thank you for watching this, and um, I'm gonna close this specific giveaway contest thing uh, exactly maybe 24 hours after posting the video so um, thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the next installment which will probably be the part two of the uh, compass shopping in Japan video so I'll see you next time. Bye.